On the table today, we have the Viper Gaming VP4300, I can't even count that high, PCIe M.2 Gen 4 Solid State Drive, that's a mouthful, definitely not what she said. This is a lightning fast SSD storage solution for PC, as well as the PlayStation 5, as it is a 2280 size, which will fit perfectly in the slot on the side of the PS5. Not to mention, it has a low profile heatsink. This thing will never throttle back and gimp your performance in games that are very, very demanding. This is rated for some lightning fast speeds. Uh, lightning? That's right, natural disaster sucker. Up to 7,400 megabytes a second on the read and 6,800 megabytes a second on the write. That's almost seven gigabytes a second write speed. Insanely fast and well over the standard or minimum recommended spec from Sony when using this on a PlayStation 5. This comes in multiple capacities. However, I do recommend one terabyte as in my opinion, that is the best bang for buck when it comes to NVMEs right now. This was of course sent out to me for review because the days of me buying things for myself are over, but I will be brutally on honest with this company if there are any cons or errors or room for improvement with their next version of this product. So it does have a nice instruction brochure or pamphlet with full color pictures that will walk you through the process of, of sticking on the heatsink, which is already applied with double-sided thermal pads. And that's made out of graphene, which is graphite's feminine counterpart. Maybe it's sister, if you will. It's actually a beautiful name. If I have a daughter, I might name her graphene. Better than chlamydia, which also rolls off the tongue nicely. Bring it down. Here we go. Here it is. My hair is crazy, but not nearly as crazy as the performance from this Viper NVMe over the last couple days playing with it on the PS5. Now, I want this video a little bit structured. Obviously, there is no script as I like to go freehand or free flow with my content. However, sharing my screen over here, you will see that I have a notepad typed up and this is going to be copied and pasted into the description of the video. And this is the result of my benchmark testing, transferring small and large game files from the console to an external and then an external to the internal console storage and launching them. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys a little bonus, a little cherry on the cream pie, so to speak, uh, my favorite dessert and explain to you some even further benchmarking that I did. That's kind of above and beyond what anybody really needs to do with this, but I would recommend watching the entire video because there's some good information in there. So a lot of my testing or benchmarking is captured on camera. I did edit it down from around an hour and a half of raw footage shot in native 4K, of course, and then condensed it down to a somewhat more manageable video because, again, I know the attention span of people on the Internet is rather minuscule, rather petite, if you will, unless I'm keeping it entertaining the whole time with some bomb ass jump cuts and have it edited like a Michael Bay movie and whatnot. People aren't going to stick around for watching scientific technical testing on a piece of electronics gear. All right, Stallions, in the living room with the PlayStation 5, we are going to run four real-world benchmarks to test the performance between my current NVMe SSD, which is a WD Black SN850, which I have installed in this channel. That tutorial is linked in the description below. That is more than just a tutorial. That's a full-on buyer's guide if you are in the market for expandable external storage. Technically, it's internal, but uh, expandable memory for the PlayStation 5, which, surprise, surprise, you're gonna wanna get. Why? Well, the, the stock console storage is 825 gigs, which you might be thinking, I, I can make do with that. Well, actually, sister, it's 667 gigabytes of usable space that you can use to store games. And knock, knock, it's 2021 here. Just to remind you that games are currently about 100 gigs a pop. Some of them, over 200. Oh, I know. Weird, right? And just a quick sidebar, just to derail from the main premise of the video for a second. For somebody that retro games a lot too, a lot of my retro game files are in the kilobytes. Some NES and Sega Genesis games. And we are now in the era of 200 gigabyte game files. Oh boy. So the four benchmarks that we are gonna be running, the first one is gonna be transferring games from the console storage to the expanded storage, aftermarket NVMe. Then we're gonna go ahead and flip her doggy style and transfer the data back over from the expanded storage to the console storage. We call it a hot swap and spit transfer. The third test is going to be launching several games and we're gonna be timing the time it takes to launch from the homepage into the main menu of the game. And last but not least, this is going to be a test of the cooling, the long-term performance of these aftermarket NVMEs by playing some games with long draw distances, very graphically impressive, very resource intensive, that is going to be stressing out the APU on board that PlayStation 5 over there. And thus games, like I said, that have long draw distances, a lot of texture packs, a lot of assets being constantly loaded in and out of this NVMe. In case some of you stallions don't understand PC components and whatnot, like NVMe uh, solid state drives, these do get really hot. That's why Sony even says to use a heatsink because memory is getting read and wrote so quickly 
I mean, we're talking 7,000 megabytes a second. That's seven gigs a second. This thing will get not only warm to the touch, but you can go ahead and cook an egg on it or light your cigarette off it. You thought the exhaust pipe on a Lamborghini Diablo VT was hot? No, sir. Touch yourself an NVMe SSD after launch and ratchet and clank. If you want to scorch your fingers. All right, Stallions, first test, we're gonna go ahead and launch one of my favorite games of all time, the Uncharted Collection, the Nathaniel Drake package, if you will. Um, as I press the cross button here, not X, you'll get called out by a PlayStation fan real quick. The uh, cross button, we're also gonna simultaneously press start on the stopwatch. We are gonna stop it when we are in the main menu and able to click something. Okay, I forgot this has a couple of splash screens. Boom, 23 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and transfer Nathan Drake and all of his friends, Chloe and Sully and his girl, Elena. They're all gonna go hop on a boat and go sail over to our external SSD. Ready, set, your mom's a hoe. I mean, go. Holy, that bar is racing across the screen. Uh, that is a 44 gigabyte game file and it's about to be done. 36.52 seconds, longer than I usually last, I'll tell you that. Now we, we's gonna go ahead and launch them again. And I have a feeling, call it woman's intuition, call it spidey sense, it's going to launch quicker. We'll say a 21.2, a 21.2. All right, now we are gonna move my favorite battle royale, Apex Legends, AKA Titanfall Battle Royale, from the external to my internal, and go. And the main reason this transfer is going a lot slower is this is from the external to the Sony stock internal storage, which is slower than pretty much any of the good aftermarket NVMEs you're gonna buy. A very underwhelming four minutes and 54 seconds. But let's try something a little bit bigger. That's what she said. 92 gigabytes, which is the size of my first mixtape. That was packed full of fire tracks, spitting bars. So we're gonna be here a while. If it took nearly five minutes for Apex Legends, go ahead and pull up a cot, just whip out a sleeping bag, maybe a French press full of coffee. Uh, we'll just make a little camping trip out of it. We're gonna be here a while. Right, we got six minutes and 42 seconds, so really not too bad. So now we're launching Apex Legends from the internal storage, 20.8 seconds. All right, Symphony of the War Zone and go. Again, as soon as I can press any kind of a button input, that is when we call it. 17.4 seconds. Did any of you stallions buy Vanguard? And if you did, how is it? Drop it in the comments section below. All right, so this is a larger file transfer at 172 gigs as it is two games compiled into one. We have Apex Legends and Warzone. And we're going to go ahead and transfer them from the internal storage to the external storage. It's still technically internal, but the uh, expanded storage, I should say. But as you can tell from our testing thus far, it is substantially quicker transferring game files from the console storage to your expanded storage as long as you have a high quality NVMe SSD. The solid state drive inside the PlayStation is quite a bit damn slower, not only to transfer games, but also to launch games as well. So I recommend only having your PlayStation 4 games and like your streaming movie and TV show applications on your actual console storage and PlayStation 5 games, just put them directly on your expanded storage because all high quality NVMe SSDs that you're gonna buy, for example, all the ones that I recommended in my buyer's guide, as well as most likely this Viper here, we're gonna find that out here today, are gonna launch games quicker, are gonna save your game files quicker, are going to load assets in the game quicker when you have games with long draw distances, you ain't gonna see no pop in. It can transfer data in and out of the game lightning fast. Lickety split lick the clit, so to speak. Yep, two minutes, almost two minutes. Apex Legends and Warzone, that's right. Two minutes and 28 seconds to transfer both Apex Legends and Warzone. Now that it's on the external, let's go ahead and launch Apex Legends. 16.39 seconds. Come over here, Warzone. Let's launch that bitch too. 18.43 seconds off of the NVMe. Anytime you're gonna be disconnecting your PlayStation 5 from power, what you need to do is go ahead and shut it down completely, which we're gonna do right now. So not rest mode. You don't wanna put her into standby or sleep mode. Uh, fully cut the juice off of her. No, I don't want filmmaker mode. No, I will not make out with you. No, I will not make out with you. <laughs> don't show it to me again. <laughs> Good Lord, if you guys have been around my channel for a while, you know. I just did a video a couple months back with the best settings for this TV. I don't know why it's asking me to change them up now. She's already optimized for HDR. All right, Stan, so step one, you wanna go ahead and remove the side stand. It is just held on by friction if you are mounted uh, horizontally as I am. However, if you are vertically like it originally was when I first got the PS5, you do have a screw on the bottom, which screws in right 
Yeah. Right up the tuchus of the console. The most difficult part of working on the PlayStation 5 is getting the side panels off. I'm gonna make it look super easy. It's gonna look like I just instantly pop them off, but I guarantee you off camera, I'm gonna be losing my temper and sweating profusely for about five to 10 minutes trying to get these side plates off. And I guarantee you every other content creator is doing that. So you only need to get one side off and that is going to be the side with the disc over here. If you are in the digital only version, which I pray to Moses up in heaven that you, you aren't, I made a separate video as to why you really shouldn't get the digital only PS5. Um, but if you do have the digital only, God rest your soul, then um, it, it's gonna be right here on the right side. You're gonna grab this top section right here. You're gonna push towards the top of the console and up. So you're pushing up and up or that way and that way while pulling up on the corner here. And there's some prongs or pegs Totally effortless, didn't break a sweat, took literally 10 seconds. Let me show you how all the content creators make it look real quick, ready? Check this out. You're gonna place one hand on the top left and you are gonna push upward in a counterclockwise rotation like this, like this. And it pops right off, easy day. It is not that easy. You do wanna make sure that you don't break off any of these tabs here because this is what allows you to get your panels back on. Now right here is where your NVMe SSD lives. You are gonna need a small Phillips head screwdriver. Just a cool little Easter egg. This is actually PlayStation face buttons, uh, which is so cool. And there's even, you know, PlayStation triangles right here. Interesting looking console. I really need to take my weekly shower. I smell like a French onion. This pops right off. I have my NVMe SSD in there and I actually had to source a separate heat sink. It's about another $15 on top of the purchase price of this NVMe, but thus far I have had no issues. So this screw is actually included on the PS5 and it will be, let me get this NVMe out of here, hold on. Ooh, warm to the touch, like I told you guys. This will be installed here. And as you can see, you have all these different holes there. And that is because the PlayStation 5 actually supports several sizes of NVMe SSDs. Now installing the NVMe SSD, you are gonna look for this little cutout right there, this little M slot, if you will. And you are going to place this uh, at an angle, kind of like a 35 degree angle. Push in, okay. And as you can see, it's just kind of drooping there on this one side, kind of like a diving board or a springboard, if you will, it just pops right up. That, that's what you want. That means it's, it's, it's in there. But what you gotta do is you gotta tie down this end right here. We're gonna go ahead and use that included screw. A very, very easy installation. You don't wanna tighten this down too hard and break the PCB or the chip, the board. So just, tight, just tighten it down nice and snug and then go ahead and return the cover. And this is a relatively tight space in here. So if you do wanna return this aluminum cover and your side panel, you wanna make sure that you get a relatively low profile heatsink. So first off, some of you PlayStation fans out there, flip your shit. It isn't sitting directly on carpet. You can't see because the coffee table's in the way, but it is sitting on top of a magazine at least. It's not directly on carpet. So don't worry, I'm not sucking up skin dander and pet hair and stuff like that. So when you first install a brand new NVMe SSD to a PlayStation 5, you have to go ahead and format it. It will not work for anything else. So if you go to put it into a PC build or something like that, you're gonna have to reformat it. So this is basically only gonna work on a PlayStation 5. Okay, I retrieved this box from the trash and it says 7,400 read and 6,800 write up to you have to read that fine print and fine it is it says up to meaning ideal circumstances i.e the thing is probably running in an ice box as for the test that the playstation has ran we're looking at about 6335 megabytes per second that's still plenty fast and much quicker than the stock sony ssd or solid state drive that is not an nvme so my final verdict with the viper nvme ssd i do think it is a solid option but i use the word option because there are a ton of competitors that are very similarly priced that will have similar if not identical performance as you can see in my testing here the numbers it, it is quicker than the wd sn850 which is one of the most high-end nvmes on the market so the fact that this is outperforming it and you do not need to to source or buy separately a heatsink because it includes one, which the SN850 did not. I had to spend an extra 10 to $15 out of pocket to get the thermal pads and the heatsink kit. And you cannot, can, 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 cannot, cannot uh, put a little echo on it too. Two. Cannot, cannot run an NVMe inside of a PlayStation 5 without a heatsink. It will, it might, it might launch in the very short term. It's going to shut itself down. You might be able to get away with it with just some PS4 titles on your PS5. But when you start playing ninth generation home console games, the PlayStation 5 games, they are so ambitious when it comes to things like assets and draw distances and whatnot that you really are going to be reading and writing data off of that storage so quickly. It's going to get very, very hot if you don't have a heat sink. And it's going to not only throttle performance where your game starts stuttering and jittering and taking longer to load, but eventually it will just just simply crash the game because it won't be able to 
keep transferring data. I am actually very impressed with this NVMe SSD and not saying that because it was sent out to me for review because there have been plenty of times in the past I've been sent a product and I'm blatantly honest about it. If it does have any issues, cons, and in this case, it, it really doesn't. It stands nut to butt, tit to nips with its competitors. This bad boy is linked in the description below as well as the results for my benchmark testing, which by the way, the numbers that are in that notepad, that word pet word pad that I typed up, those are the average of three tests of each of those benchmarks. So that's why the video was like an hour and a half of raw footage is because I did the same test having to wait for it to transfer back and forth three times. I'm not going to have that entire process on camera because nobody cares about that or wants to see that. But I was very, very thorough with the benchmarking of this thing where I did three separate tests of each benchmark and then averaged them out in the calculator. And then that's the results that you guys are going to have here. Now, results may vary if you get this NVMe and do the exact same benchmarks. It might vary a few seconds. Why? Uh, silicon lottery. Every single PCB printed circuit board, every piece of silicon is not created equal. You know, you get uh, an iPhone 13 Pro and your buddy gets the same phone and one performs three to four percent better. Same thing with you get a GPU and yours actually has better thermal performance than your buddy that has the same card. It's the, the silicon lottery. So every once in a while you get a PC component that runs a little bit better than the norm. 10 out of 10. That's how many fingers I have. That's that's what I'll give it. 10 out of 10. No complaints with it. Good option for PS5. Good option for PC. Pretty much showing two things you would use it for. Put it in your pager if you need to ex extend the uh, extend the memory of your pager for all those 411s and 911s you'd be getting. A lot of you won't get that reference at all, and that's okay. If you enjoyed this video, liking it will help it to get seen by more people. So this information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. Don't usually stroke my mic during outros. I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.